Well, hello, folks. This is Pastor Steve Cape and my lovely wife all the way to the right over here, of course, is Mrs. Wanda Cape. Hello. And here right in the middle between the two of uh, us is... Heather Cape. This is Heather Cape, and this is our oldest daughter. And, of course, she hasn't been in on our videos this week as we have been celebrating International Epilepsy Day as well as International Epilepsy Week. And uh, But uh, we brought her in today. And uh, the, really the reason why she hasn't been with us on the last two videos is because she's been uh, a little bit uh, lethargic and tired because of a new medication. So, but she's going to help us with some things again tonight as we talk about, discuss some things about epilepsy and about uh, seizures. And again, all of this is because of the International Epilepsy Day and Week. And uh, we felt like that uh, people could be of assistance and help if we were to give um, some information, things that we have learned after 27 years of helping to take care of our, our daughter, Heather, who's gone through unbelievable suffering in, uh, in years gone by, even today, she experiences many different problems. So um, we're gonna go a little bit further. Uh, we've addressed several things, and I wanna point out to you and remind you very quickly that one out of every 26 people will be diagnosed with having epilepsy in America. Um, that's a, a pretty large stati statistic there, mm -hmm. if I could say that correctly. Mm -hmm. And then about every about 10% of of the population of America will, at one time in their life, have at least one seizure. So again, it's a very important subject to speak about. And tonight, I've asked Mrs. Kate to talk to us a little bit further about uh, some reasons and causes and some symptoms of seizures. So listen very closely, and uh, this will help us to learn a little bit more tonight about epilepsy and about seizures. So if you personally are suspect that maybe you've had a seizure or concerned that you are having seizures or that your loved one is, these are some things to look for. Uh, there'll be sensory changes in that category. There'll be a strange or an odd feeling. Sometimes the people that have epilepsy will describe it as a electrical feeling going through the body, uh, maybe a spinning or a dizziness that they can't seem to control, an out-of-body sensation perhaps. Sometimes there's an unusual smell or a taste and there's numbness or tingling uh, throughout the body in certain uh, fingertips or feet. And um, that's one of the things that, ha things that happens during the sensory changes. Now let me ask you this, Heather, if we can, have you experienced those type of things before? I have. Okay, with regards to how many times you've said to us, you said, what is that smell? Yeah. And then go into a seizure or yeah. um, uh, different things that would take place and happen. Can you explain some of that to us? What, what do you, when do you know a seizure is about to take place? Um, I'll call mom or, mom or dad or I will start, go, I'll, I'll go immediately go into one. Okay. What does it feel like? Um, um, I'll just start going into it. Mm -hmm. Feel like shaking. And I'll sing. Mm -hmm. Okay, your singing helps her to be able to overcome or come out of the seizures. Right. And but again, just say this to you today, she is somewhat lethargic because of the medication. Yes, um, new I medication that was brought on board back a, uh, a few weeks ago. And she's kind of climaxed with that right now, Sorry. maybe a little bit toxic. Um, but uh, she's explained so many of the things that Mrs. Cape was talking about a moment ago with regards to those sensory changes at the beginning of a seizure. What are some of the other things, Mrs. Cape? Then there'll be some mental changes, like there's confusion, trouble with memory, uh, maybe forgetting things, daydreaming or staring off, and you can't really gain their attention, loss of awareness or consciousness. These things uh, are in the mental category. And then physical things to look out for is involuntary movements of the arms or legs. If the person is walking and all of a sudden they start going in slow motion or stop walking in their tracks and, and bend down like they're going to sit down or fall, uh, those are things to look for. Dropping or falling just instantly without no warning. Um, forced head turning where their head will jerk to one side and stay there. Um, biting of the tongue and then loss of um, bowels sometimes will take place. Heather, at times, with going into a seizure, her eye would start to twitch. And yes. her, um, even today, her uh, one side of her face will kind of draw up at her lip. 
and uh, will start to pulling up a little bit as she's going into a seizure. She's had different things with regards to maybe a finger uh, that starts up and then it goes into the hand, a little bit more into the arm and, and as well. So those are things you've experienced, aren't they? I have. Okay. So some of these things I've talked about usually occur with focal seizures where the person is partly aware and then maybe lose a little bit of, you know, get a little bit unconscious, but they're partly aware. So those are things that happen, but if they go into a full grandma seizure, of course you're gonna know because they're gonna immediately hit the floor and start jerking all over. Um, anything that takes place, what usually can, can expect after the seizure would be confusion, sleepiness. They'll be extremely sleepy because of the electrical charge that has just taken place in their brain. And weakness, maybe they can't stand or uh, move their legs or arms, um, headaches, also nausea, even vomiting, and heavy breathing also comes with all that. Okay, so these are some of the uh, type of symptoms that people can have at the beginning of a seizure. If you're noticing, you're watching, or you're you that may have a seizure, and of course there are many other type of things, of course, that individuals experience, and sometimes when a person has a seizure, they have no idea what's going on, and then of course if it becomes into, if it advances, goes into a tonic-clonic seizure, uh, many times it just somewhat erases the memory of the individual. They don't recall or remember anything that took place and happened just a few seconds before the seizure or in even after that, right. during it as well as even after that. But what we're trying to do is just give you a little bit of heads up and uh, to be able to help you to have some understanding of what your loved one may be experienced, your friend, your coworker at school, even that classmate and uh, or that uh, football player or that baseball player on the team. And uh, there have been a lot of people, there are coaches again of, of university football uh, teams that have had seizures and epilepsy. Um, again, there are many, many people in the workforce and field that have had uh, multiple problems. And, and so this just kind of assists you and helps you uh, to kind of understand a little bit more. What right. else, Ms. Kate? Well, if you want to know about different things that cause seizures, of course, number one on the list would be epilepsy. And that is just electrical misfiring in the brain. And in order to have epilepsy, you have to be proven on an EEG that there's electrical activity that's abnormal. Um, and then there could be an acute head injury, maybe even a stroke. If uh, the brain isn't getting enough oxygen levels in the brain, then that too can cause a seizure. So let's just, let me go back again, if I can say mm -hmm. something real quick. So again, um, when a person has more than one seizure, they're, they're referred to, or can be, if it's electrical in the brain, uh, referred to as being epilepsy. Right. And uh, but then there are many other things that a person could have or uh, take place in their life that can have seizures that would not be considered epilepsy. Right. Uh, there is what is called today... Um, uh, P-N-E-S. P-N-E-S, that's non-epileptic seizures. People mm -hmm. have uh, non-epileptic seizures that you cannot record the, the brain waves in, in seizure activity, but yet uh, they're having seizures and they're very real mm -hmm. um, uh, as well. What, what are some of the other things, Ms. Kate? Well, drugs or alcohol can cause seizure Drug activity. abuse and yes. alcohol abuse certainly can. Uh, trauma, like we mentioned, a head injury. Uh, anything that causes scarring in the brain or inflammation in the brain, bacterial, uh, viral, or parasitic infections in the brain can cause a person to have seizures. And, and that's what they thought Heather's had caused was, right. was viral because Heather, rare disease, one that out of every 10 million would have the disease that she has is Rasmussen's encephalitis. And, uh, and, and they believe that that is viral mm -hmm. um, as well. So what are some of the- Though other? Heather's first seizure happened because of a bike wreck, we're not sure if she actually had the seizure while on the bike and fell, or if the fall from the bike caused the seizure. We really don't know. But after so many tests and figuring out things, we did determine that she had Rasmussen's encephalitis, which is a viral infection that settles in the brain. Um, also, um, cog, cog, con, <laughs> I can't even say it. Genital, yes. um, genital brain defects. Brain defects, yes. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's genetic. Uh, there are, also could be brain tumor. Anybody suffering with hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia. Um, and then endocrine changes where hormonal changes are taking place can also 
cause seizures. But what about little children, uh, say a few months old to uh, toddlers, three month, three years old or so, they could have a febrile uh, seizure. Yeah, that's where they have a fever that spikes really high rapidly and it will have them have seizures. Yes, yes. So there are various things again that causes seizures. Uh, Heather's had uh, every known type of seizure mm -hmm. you can think about. I mean, she's had the... Uh, I think she's invented a few. Maybe yeah. she's got the Heather seizure out there somewhere. Yeah, she said the tonic-clonic, <laughs> the atonic. She's had uh, the, uh, help me out, the focal... The uh, absence, the simple partial complex seizures, focal seizures, yeah. brain mal seizures. Yes, every, everything that you seizures, can think about. Drop seizures, lapping seizures. Yes. She's had all kinds. She, she certainly has. And so what would we do with regards to a person having a seizure? What can we do to assist them? Okay, so if you're witnessing somebody that's going into a seizure, you're, you're suspect that that may be what's happening. And Whether it's, there, there's two types of that. That's a non-convulsive seizure yeah. and a convulsive seizure. So um, if, they are, uh, if they are awake and they're, uh, they're conscious, okay, um, there are some things to do with them, and then when somebody is non-conscious into a seizure, how you can assist them and help them. Okay, so for those who are non-convulsive, meaning they're standing or whatever, you'll need to get them seated pretty quickly. Um, if they start going into a convulsive seizure, you'll need to lay them on their side. But you need to get them seated uh, so that they cannot fall or harm themselves. And then also, you'll need to stay with them and uh, just observe the seizure, talk calmly to them and quietly, uh, assure them that you're there, make eye contact with them if you can, um, get the person, um, avoid restraining them, do not uh, do anything that would, you know, make them stay seated or anything like that, but just try to stay with them and then, um, be with them until they regain consciousness. If, if you do restrain someone, again, that can cause fear. It can also cause injury to the individual, possibly even to yourself. So be careful. You do want them where they're not injuring themselves, so be right. very careful with that. Now, that would basically be a non-convulsive type right. of seizure. But what if a person becomes uh, uh, unconscious? They have a the, the, the seizure goes to both sides of the brain, becomes generalized, tonic-clonic. And, uh, and they're not conscious, they're not aware of anything that's happening, what would we do there? If they have fallen to the floor, you're gonna to need to move any, any objects that might be in their way and give them space and turn them on their side so that their body has time and area to uh, finish out the course of the seizure and jerk and move as it needs to. Don't try to restrain them as their body's moving in different areas. That's That could be, you could pull a muscle or something like that would be, harmful to them after the seizure is over. But if there's something nearby them, push, move yes. that out of the way because they could uh, hit their, their arm or uh, uh, again towards something and cause more injury as well. And so you got to be uh, extremely careful with that. And one of the other things that you could do or should do is to try to locate whether it's a clock or a watch that you're wearing and to try to start timing. Um, if you're there when it first begins, um, start timing again how long a person is in this seizure. Uh, a uh, unconscious seizure is very, very serious. Yes. And uh, so if, and Ms. Kate, explain that. If a person were to be in a seizure that lasts longer than five minutes. Um, well, that's, that's not a good thing at all. It's uh, very serious. Um, you need to log it and be sure that you can tell the uh, medical people exactly how long the seizure lasted, what they were doing in the seizure, what kind of movements were happening, whether it was the left side moving or the right side, eye movement, mouth movement, mm -hmm. um, you know, those things that you know could have been going on during that seizure. Um, but you don't want it to go more than five minutes unless, of course, the person you are very familiar with and you know that they have a history of seizures and these seizures look like normal seizures to you. Um, then that wouldn't be an emergency situation. But for someone you don't know, uh, this could be their first seizure, you want to be sure to get authorities called within that five minutes. And we realize again that when we put a video like this out that there are many people that are listening to us 
that uh, some have no knowledge of Caesars whatsoever. Some have witnessed a Caesar once or twice in their life and they've never really assisted anybody. But someone who lives with daily seizures or even weekly or monthly, um, they know what to do, with, to do, whether it's a parent to the child or to a sibling to a sibling or the child to the adult, again, uh, of what to do. In some, some situations, again, uh, they would have rescue meds of what to do, how to administer those to help them to be able to come out of that uh, tonic-clonic uh, seizure. Even at most tonic-clonic seizures are only gonna last two or three minutes at the most, that's, that's normal. Um, and uh, that's, the, that's the longest that they'll last. Right. Also, you'll want to avoid putting anything in their mouth. That's right. That is, an old wives' tale is not true. They will not swallow their tongue. That's right. Uh, that's why you want to put them on their side so that their airway will be open so that they can breathe. But they'll, they'll make some uh, unusual sounds and uh, even scary noises at times. But you just need to continue to watch them and make sure that the seizure runs its course and uh, that they come out of it safely. Uh, and then if you do call 911, you'll need to wait till the authorities get there and mm -hmm. explain what you witnessed while they were in the seizure. Right. And if they have glasses on, you're going to want to remove those because anything like that would scar their, you know, hurt them or could cut them. And um, if there is a fall and there is blood where they have hit their head or busted their lip or whatever, uh, you're going to probably need to call medical personnel. Okay. So, so Heather, you have had a lot of seizures, haven't you? Who's going to sneeze? <laughs> Bless Bless you. You. Bless you. Yes, I'm sorry. Right there on candy camera. I'm sorry. That's right. So you've had many seizures over the years, haven't you? I have. Hundreds of thousands of seizures. Yes. You've had all kinds where you have fallen and hurt yourself. What's one of the things that you've done that's hurt yourself? Bust my teeth. Bust their teeth. Broke both of her teeth, front teeth out. Yeah. And you broke your nose. Nose. And uh, you broke your collarbone. Yes. Your, your leg, your ankle. She's busted all kind of things she's hip um, hip replaced and uh and she's had just all kind of different things that have happened we've threatened to wrap her in bubble wrap because <laughs> <laughs> she's she's done those things i remember we were in walmart uh right before her first brain surgery and it happened to be our youngest daughter's birthday and we were in walmart and heather fell about 15 times with seizures before we got her out of that store. It was incredible. I mean, we were walking her, this is before she was needing a wheelchair, and um, she would just fall right out from underneath us. Seat. And we had yeah. no no way of catching Boom, and she's down on the ground again. And then we'd get her back up and walk a few more feet, and boom, she was down again. So um, her situation has been quite unusual. You don't see this in the normal uh, people's situations, but if there is an underlining cause that is causing seizures, like a disease or something that is causing the epilepsy, then you may see situations similar to Heather's. That's right. Now, we're going to have to end this video today, but we'd like to say to you real quick, if there's any way that we could ever be of assistance to you, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can email us. Um, email us at cerebrumconnections at gmail.com. Heather's website is godmakesnomistakes.com. Mm -hmm. Her email to that website is godmakesnomistakes.com at gmail.com. You could private message Heather um, on Facebook. There are other ways, of course, through Twitter that you could uh, also contact us. And we'd love to be able to help or assist. And, and, and again, we don't have all the knowledge in the world, but I'll tell you this. Uh, we have certainly have lived with her problems, and she's lived with her problems for 27 years and been an inspiration to a lot of different people. And so if we can help you in any way, please let us know. Right.